cataractcoach.com. Watch this carefully. A diamond side port blade is used to make the paracentesis. That then holds the eye fixated. Now the diamond care tome is used to create the main incision. And all this is done with no viscoelastic in the eye. This is a different technique than I usually do because this is not me operating. This is Dr. Michael Patterson from Crossville, Tennessee, and we're gonna to learn today the slow motion analysis of his surgery. He now squirts the eye with anesthetic, and he's going to fill the anterior chamber with this preserve-free anesthetic as well. The incision that he makes is a little bit different than most, and he can do that because his diamond keratome has sides that are not sharp. Here now through the main incision, viscoelastic is being put inside the eye to inflate the anterior chamber and protect the corneal endothelium. That looks like a dispersive agent. And we're going to watch his video very carefully and see what we can learn from a different surgeon. Now, the video is edited a little bit. Here he's using a cystitome, a bent needle, to start at the capsorexis. Starting in the center of the lens capsule, he's going to poke in and cut across and try to get a flap turned over here. That looks great. Again, this video is edited, so you'll see some of these quick fades, such as now we're going to go from this cystitome to the forceps. There we go, that's the fade. And the capsorex is being completed. This is a capsorex of around five millimeters in diameter, and it's very well centered. And again, grabbing the capsule and pivoting nicely in the incisions. This looks great. You know, I want to emphasize too that there is no one right or wrong way of doing surgery. We each have different techniques that work very well in our hands. And it's up to you, the newer, younger surgeon who's learning still, to try many different techniques. Emulate some mentors initially, and then develop your own style, your own flavor, your own way of doing things. And certainly, if you have a better way, teach us. Here's balanced salt solution on a 27 gauge blunt cannula. And the fluid waves are going to start going across. There's a big fluid wave. It is very important in cataract surgery to get a good hydro dissection. That makes nucleus removal so much easier. So in cases like this with a beautiful capsorexis, make sure that we get good fluid waves for the visco the hydro dissection. Here now, at the same time, he's going to rotate the nucleus. And so you saw he dug the cannula into the nucleus and it's rotating. That's great. Here comes the phaco probe. So the infusion, notice how he wets the cornea before going in. That saves some time for your assistant. Phaco probe goes in the eye. A little bit of cleanup of the material, the anterior cortical material. Phaco probe goes into the nucleus to fixate it and he's going to do a chop. So there's a chopper coming into the left hand, looks like a Nagahara chopper. Chopper is being pushed out towards the periphery. So a horizontal type chop. So there's the phaco probe being embedded in the nucleus. Chopper goes out to the equator of the lens, bring the two instruments together and apart. And certainly that's a beautiful chop. He's got two halves right away. Further buzz in the probe, and one half can be chopped now, and even smaller fragments. So this is a beautiful classic horizontal chop technique. It does require that you bring the chopper instrument out towards the caps or bag equator, so it does go underneath the rexus. It's a skill that has to be learned. We're not born knowing this, but you can see it makes for very efficient surgery. The nuclear piece is now being emulsified. Note how he keeps the cataract pieces in front of the phaco probe. That's very important. So we've got most of the first half out. Here comes a little bit more of that first half. Further separating with the chopper. Embed the probe right into that piece. And it doesn't need to be further sub chopped. So he's just going to feed it right into the phaco probe. Again, when you fine-tune your fluidic settings and your phaco power settings, 
these pieces go in the probe very easily. Chopper used, look at that, pushing the piece in front of the fake up probe. That's a key move. Hard to see that in real time, but in slow motion, we can tell. Now, 50% of the nucleus is out. There's the remaining hemi-nucleus. Rotates it with the phaco probe, buzzing right in the middle. Bring the hemi-nucleus towards us. Chopper's going to go around the periphery. There's the equator and a beautiful horizontal chop. Push to further separate the pieces and now take out these remaining two quadrants. So that looks great. Fast forward a little bit to the irrigation aspiration to remove the lens cortex putting the probe in the eye and I'm going to go and remove the cortex material notice how he had a very good hydra section at the very beginning so he's gotten rid of most of the cortex material that's about less than half of its remaining so grabbing it and then bringing it centrally and then applying the vacuum so again watch this he's going to position where he wants. I'm going to grab some of the cortex. There's a little bit out of the screen there. So focus on this sub incision. We'll grab the cortex here, lower vacuum, just to grab it. Now when we grab it, swing the port up, bring the probe centrally, and apply more vacuum. Try that again. A little vacuum here. Now port comes up, bring the whole thing centrally to strip it away, and now give higher vacuum with the foot pedal. That's a beautiful technique. That worked very well. A little bit of wispy cortex left. This will be a lot easier to remove. So a little bit of a gentle vacuum there. And that looks great. Now he's using a metal IA tip, which works great. Just got to make sure that your staff knows how to maintain these instruments. Fill in the capture bag with viscoelastic now. To inflate the capture bag. That looks really good. You also notice that the caps for axis was torn perfectly and with respect to those Purkinje images. Now this patient is going to get an extended depth of field IOL and that has to be lined up. Those central rings have to line up with those Purkinje images in the patient's central visual axis and also the center of the pupil. Here comes the lens being delivered. Nice and controlled. Notice how there's not much movement of the globe itself. And then once the lens is placed inside the eye, it's gonna, he's going to use the chopper and then dial it around to the position that he wants. That looks great. And I'm going to allow this to open up. So he's actually using the injector itself to push the whole lens into the capsule bag. So that's a neat technique, different than I would do. And we can certainly learn from him here. So without having to switch to a second instrument or a different instrument, he can just use that injector itself. Now the lens is going to be positioned where he wants it. With key, uh, a key point here is to line up the Purkinje image. You see the light reflex in the center? To get those nicely lined up, with the center of that IOL. Here's going behind the IOL to remove viscoelastic. I agree that's an important step. Novice surgeons don't like to do this, which is okay, but I think once you get a few thousand cases on your butt, it's important to remove viscoelastic from behind the IOL. It gives for a better visual outcome for your patients in the immediate post-op period because there's no viscoelastic there to obscure things, but also prevents the IOL from slipping around or, or getting out of alignment which is very key for, say, a toric lens or even these types of multifocal or extended depth of field lenses that have these diffractive rings. So care is being taken to remove all the viscoelastic. And then at the end, time to seal up the incisions. Again, look at that Purkinje image. That's beautifully lined up. A little bit of hydration of the incision. And then inflating the anterior chamber and to finish the case up here. So very nice technique from Dr. Michael Patterson. Certainly we can learn from this, a lot to take home. I think the biggest difference for me compared to uh, my techniques are the way he's doing the incisions at the beginning. And I think his is a very viable technique. I do like it, I may have to try it. Um, in addition, his chop technique is a pure horizontal chop. So that's something that most of the novice surgeons here can start to learn. 
If you're using the appropriate instrumentation like he is with that Nagahara chopper, you'll be fine. And then the last step here is taking his time to really get the lens beautifully centered. Lining up, look at that, wow, Perkinji images are exactly in the center. You see how he tilts the lens, tilts the eye, make sure it gets exactly where he wants it. That's going to show the best visual outcome for this patient. So beautiful technique. Thanks for watching. Now keep watching the video. We're now going to have Dr. Michael Patterson himself give us an overview and give his voiceover for the same surgery, but now shown in real time. Hello, this is Michael Patterson from Eye Centers of Tennessee, just showing you a case of implanting the Symphony lens from AMO. This is my standard approach for cataract surgeries uh, with a basically a bimanual incision approach. My father, Larry Patterson, taught me this technique a while back, and I've been using it ever since with basically almost no complications. It's a very efficient way to do things. Um, put a little lidocaine into the eye and then viscoelastic. Use a bent needle here to start the capsulorexis. Typically use utratas to finish the rest of the rexus or some sort of capsular rexus forceps. Once the capsular rexus is made, I use a 27 gauge um, regular generic um, syringe and cannula and gently hydro dissect with a good posterior pressure on the lens and an easy rotation of the lens. We use a Stellaris FACO machine and this is a straight FACO handpiece with just a regular um, chopper from stores. Bury the FACO tip in. This is just my standard FACO chop technique. I typically just bury and use FACO on the first crack and then don't use any more FACO for the other cracks other than just to um, I just keep my FACO tip in the same plane and use my chopper to tilt sideways and crack the lens. The Stellaris machine, as you can see here, easily um, is able to manipulate and evacuate this lens without any problem. With a very good chamber stability, basically no movement of the anterior segment. Again, just a simple, normal chop technique here to disassemble this lens. With the IA tip, we use a um, stainless IA reusable handpiece and this seems to work well for us. It is a straight tip which some people like the curve, some straight. doesn't really seem to matter too much. Just remove in the cortex. You see here just injecting viscoelastic into the bag making sure we have a nice um, full bag before we implant this lens. The capsular rexus is near perfectly circular and we use the AMO Symphony lens here as we dial it in. Typically with all single piece lenses, if you'll just keep dialing in the lens with the injector and use the injector to just gently go up on top, you can nudge the edge of the trailing haptic and it will go into the bag in total without using a second, the need for a second instrument. I always go underneath the optic to evacuate all the viscoelastic out of the eye and gently recenter the optic with the FACO eye with the eye handpiece. Just hydrating the wounds. I use just a gentle hydration here. I find that these wounds seal just fine from the diamond blade. You see here the symphony lens is just near perfectly centered. And I will go in and just adjust it just a little bit to make sure it's perfectly centered in the bag. And that's the end of the case. Thanks for watching.